not a bad view for today's video, though the view does have nothing to do with today's video. Today we're talking about capos, or capos. Feel free to argue about the pronunciation in the comments. They're not big, they're not expensive, and they're not complicated. In fact, the whole core principle of them can be replicated with a pencil and an elastic band. Though this isn't recommendable, it, it can kind of work. As a guitar player, this is my secret weapon. You've never seen me use one on video, but I've used them to record and write music, and I always have one on my desk. I use it a lot, but I didn't always use it. I used to think that I didn't need one, but it's become an invaluable tool since. So why do I use it? Well, firstly, a lot of my guitars are tuned one full step down. That's D standard. <laughs> But if I'm trying to learn riffs in other tunings, it's very easy to go from D standard straight to E flat by just putting the capo on the first fret. Or move the capo one more fret and get E standard. So that's kind of handy, but then again I could just change tunings or use a different guitar. Now, my favourite reason for using a capo is to play one octave up. There are pedals and pitch shifters that can do this artificially, though they are considerably more expensive than even the most boutique capos, and even then, in my opinion at least, they still don't sound as natural as just putting a capo on. Simply place the capo on the 12th fret and play the same chords in the same shapes as you normally would, open strings and all. That sounded nice, and you can even have a little bit of fun and play what would be heavy riffs like this, and it can sound amusing. <laughs> and while that doesn't sound all that impressive on its own, the best part is when you mix this into a composition. It can transform a riff into a song. Let's hear the intro demo again, and listen to how the capoed octave affects the music. It would be difficult to replicate that without the capo. The riff relies on open strings, and with the capo I don't have to change the way I'm playing the riff. And this doesn't have to be genre specific either, you can use this in any form of music. I was messing around with the slide and, again, I took a really simple riff, put a capo on the 12th fret, and it turned this basic standard riff into a song. Again, that relied on open strings. I wouldn't be able to do that without the capo. I used the same technique on a song by my band Walker called Dreaming of You. The original guitar riff goes like this. It sounds nice, but for extra impact, we then added the capo octave.
And it's great for structuring songs too. You can add and take away that octave and you can change the mood of what you're hearing. Really useful. So now you know how I use a capo, I would like to mention one of the problems that I faced when I started using them, and that's staying in tune. One of the most common complaints I see about capos is that when people put them on their guitars, the strings automatically go out of tune. And I believe this has a lot to do with the type of capo being used. I used to use one of these types. And that spring would put a mousetrap to shame. These types of capos are not adjustable and the pressure that they put on the strings is just so overpowered. A capo's job is to be like an extra finger. It's supposed to put the same amount of pressure that your finger would on the strings. And this one certainly did a lot more than that. It puts way too much pressure on the strings, which causes damage to the strings. It can damage your frets and it's definitely not gonna keep you in tune. One day I was messing around with this capo and I was opening it up and then I let it go and the spring sheared the handle off. Granted, it's probably pot metal, but the point is there's way too much power in this non-adjustable spring. I much prefer the adjustable capos. That way I can choose how much pressure I want on the strings and it does actually act as if it was a finger pressing down on them. It's not gonna damage my strings, it's not gonna damage my frets, and the strings actually seem to stay in tune. Now when it comes to capos, there's loads of different designs, loads of different brands. I'm using the Dario Pro capo, but use whatever you can find. Even if you have one of the non-adjustable ones, like I did, I used that one for years. The wear on it could tell you that much, but it comes down to how you use the capo. So if you've got one lying around, I strongly advise you to chuck it on the 12th fret and just mess around. And that's really it. Just a simple video on capos with a strangely scenic background. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, subscribe and like the video. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.